Okay? Next is your TSI. O, ano ibig sabihin ng TSI? This is your triple sugar iron. Okay? Tinawag siya na TSI, tinawag siya na triple sugar kasi yung ating agar, it contains three sugars. And what are these sugars? These are your glucose, lactose, and sucrose. Okay? These are the three sugars. The glucose, lactose, and sucrose. Okay? Now, these three sugars are not found in the same proportion. Okay, as you can see, you have 0.1% glucose, 1% lactose, and 1% sucrose. So, ang proportion nila is actually 1 is to 10 is to 10. Okay? With glucose having the lesser concentration. Okay, 1 is to 10 is to 10. Yan. Glucose, lactose, and sucrose. Okay? O, tandaan yan. Babalikan natin in a while. Now, if you take a look at your TSI, okay, your agar, drawing lang tayo, your agar is a butt and Slant agar. Butt and slant. Okay. Kaya nagpe pag nagpe-prepare kayo nito guys, hindi siya basta-bastang nilalagay lang sa tube. No? Dapat habang nagkukul yung agar nyo, may uh, incline siya. Pero hindi rin dapat sobrang incline. Kasi pag sobrang incline naman, puro slant lang yung magagawa nyo. Kaya kailangan butt and slant yan. Okay? Bakit mahalagang may slant? Bakit mahalagang may butt? Yung slant at butt, this would actually serve as two separate chambers. Okay? This would serve as two separate chambers. Your slant is considered the aerobic chamber. Okay? This is considered as your aerobic chamber. Okay? But on the other hand, butt is considered as your anaerobic chamber anaerobic kasi hindi siya exposed sa oxygen. Okay? Now, knowing this, saan magta-take place ang fermentation? Would it take place in the slant or in the butt? Type nga ako guys sa chat box. Saan mangyayari ang fermentation? Sa slant or sa butt? Pumili guys sa mga fermented products, no? Ano ba? Kimchi, vinegar, uh, wine, di ba? Suka. These are all fermented products. How do you ferment these products? Okay, when you do fermentation, kailangan sealed off yan from oxygen. Kasi ang fermentation po, an aerobic process. Okay? So fermentation happens here in the butt. Okay? Fermentation happens in the butt. Okay? And what then would be the byproduct? Of fermentation. Ano magiging byproduct ng fermentation? Yan, very good. Fermentation would now produce acids. So ang acid production nyo dito, if fermentation takes place, it would start noon sa butt. Acid production would start doon sa butt. Okay? Nakuha class. Fermentation happens in the butt. Acid production happens in the butt. Okay, now, let's integrate what you have just mentioned a while ago. Remember, there are three sugars. Okay, ano yung tatlong sugar? Glucose, lactose, and sucrose. Okay? If the organism ferments glucose only, if the organism ferments glucose only, Okay. Kaunting acid lang yung mapoproduce nyo. Why? Kasi you only have a small amount of glucose. Nakuha niyo yung, yung principle, guys. If you're going to ferment glucose only, you're going to form just a small amount of acid. Okay? Kasi nga, konti lang din yung glucose. Now, yung acid na yun, okay,
yung acid na yun, it would be enough to acidify the butt. Okay? However, kaunti lang yung acid. So yung slant, hindi siya madadamay. The slant would remain alkaline. Nagets yun, class? So anong result ng TSI? If the organism ferments glucose only. K over A lang siya. Okay, nagets yun, guys? K over A lang siya. Now, if the organism ferments glucose plus another sugar, either uh, lactose or sucrose, okay, gano'ng karaming acid naman yung mapoproduce nyo? Okay, you're fermenting now another sugar aside from glucose. So gano'ng karaming acid? This time, you would be producing more acid. Diba? You're going to produce more acid. So can you acidify the butt? Can you acidify the butt? Yes. Okay. Can you acidify the slant? Yes, kasi mas marami ng acid na napoproduce. So ano magiging TSI result nyo if the organism ferments glucose plus another sugar? So, nandiyan na sa slide natin, guys. Okay? So it would be A over A. Nagigets nyo, guys. Okay, clear tayo dito. Now, what if the organism does not ferment any of the three sugars? Now, what if non-fermenter siya? Kung non-fermenter, are you going to produce any acid? The answer is no. Wala kang kahit anong acid. Okay? So, ano magiging result nyo? Your butt would remain alkaline. The slant would remain alkaline also. So, it would now be K over K. Okay? Nagets nyo, guys? Alright. Sige, tingnan natin kung nagets po natin. Magbibigay ako ng organism and then try to identify the TSI result. Okay. So, first organism, E. coli. Type ako ng uh, sagot sa chat box, guys. Ano po ang TSI ng E. coli? O, analyze natin. Dahan-dahan. Remember, E. coli is part of your entero Bacteria CA. Diba? Part siya ng entero box. So automatically, it ferments what sugar? It ferments glucose. Okay? Given na yun. Now, aside from glucose, may iba pa bang sugar na fineferment ang E. coli? Ayun. Very good. The other sugar fermented by E. coli is lactose. Remember, si, lact si E. coli po, part nung eke. Diba? Yung eke niya, those are the rapid lactose fermenters. So E. coli, Klebsiella, Enterobacter, these are all Rapid lactose fermenters. So actually, for your eke, for those three organisms, okay, your TSI would now be A over A. Nakuha guys, lahat sila A over A. Okay? Because aside from glucose, they ferment another sugar which is lactose. So they're producing a lot of acid. That acid would be enough to acidify the butt and also to acidify the slant. Okay? Alright, next organism. Salmonella and Shigella. Salmonella and Shigella. Ang Salmonella at Shigella, members po iyan ng enterobac. So, we know that they ferment the sugar glucose. Okay? However, aside from glucose, do they ferment lactose? Remember, non-lactose fermenter yan. ba? Diba? Do they ferment sucrose? The answer is also no. So, how much acid? Are this, uh, would these organisms produce? Glucose lang yung ferment nila. Diba? They're going to produce just a small amount of acid. Okay? The small amount of acid would acidify the butt. However, this would not be enough for the slant. Okay? So, maging result ni for Salmonella and Shigella would be K over A. Salmonella and Shigella would be K over A. Okay, tayo doon. Alright, next. Konting challenge. How about your proteus? Mapakinggan niyo muna yung facts. For proteus, there are two important species. No? Proteus vulgaris and proteus mirabilis. Members to na entero back. Okay? However, they are non-lactose fermenters. No? 
glucose fermenter sila but they are non-lactose fermenter. Okay? Magkakatalo lang sila when it comes to sucrose. Okay? Proteus vulgaris ferment sucrose. Proteus mirabilis on the other hand does not ferment sucrose. Okay? So unay natin, Proteus vulgaris, what would be your TSI? Type nga sa chat box guys. For Proteus vulgaris, what would be your TSI? The TSI of Proteus vulgaris would be A over A. O bakit A over A? O remember, it ferments glucose. It would produce at least a small amount of acid. And then, aside from glucose, it ferments sucrose. Okay? Since it, is, since it uh, can ferment sucrose, it would now produce more acid. So it can now acidify the butt. It can also acidify the slant. So magiging A over A. How about Proteus mirabilis? Guys, ang Proteus mirabilis, member ng enterobac. So it ferments glucose. However, it does not ferment lactose. It would also not ferment sucrose. So gaano karaming acid yung pino-produce niya? Konti lang. Okay? It can acidify the but however it cannot acidify the slant. So your Proteus mirabilis would be K over A. Proteus mirabilis would be K over A. Oh, sige, isa pang challenge, guys. Citrobacter. What do you know about Citrobacter? Ano yung nabanggit natin kanina? Citrobacter po, member na enterobac yan. Okay, when it comes to lactose fermentation, ano siya guys? Slow lactose fermenter. So ano yung magiging TSI niya? If you answered A over A, or you answered K over A, you're actually correct. No, the answer here is both. Okay, it would depend on how long you incubate. So initially, initially, Citrobacter would be K over A. So initially, K over A siya. Kasi ang fine-ferment nilang initially, glucose lang. However, upon prolonged incubation, eventually magpo-ferment na rin siya ng lactose. So magpo-produce na rin siya ng maraming acid. So from K over A, eventually, magiging A over A na siya. Nakuha guys, magiging A over A na siya eventually. Okay, nagets po natin ito. O oh, sige, how about Pseudomonas aeruginosa? Ang Pseudomonas po, hindi yan member ng enterobac. Okay, una sa lahat mo, natry ko siya. Okay, tapos wala siyang sugar na fine-ferment. It does not ferment glucose. Okay, so non-member talaga ito. So what do you think is the TSI? Alright, very good. Now, the TSI of Pseudomonas would be K over K. Okay, it would not produce acid via fermentation. Okay, so Domonas aeruginosa is K over K. Now, ang tanong ko sa inyo guys, pwede ba tayong magka-member ng enterobac na K over K ang result? Okay, very good. The answer is no. Remember, one of the characteristics no, that we have mentioned a while ago is that all members ferment glucose. Okay? Since they all ferment glucose, they would produce at least a small amount of acid enough to acidify the butt. So lahat ng enterobac acidified yung butt. Magkakatalo na lang sila doon sa slag. Okay? Kaya pag nakita niyo yung K over K, uy, hindi ito member ng enterobacter C. Nagets nyo guys? Okay ba tayo doon? Alright. Now, aside from sugar fermentation, your TSI can also check for H2S production. Okay? It can also check for H2S production. So, yung mga H2S producers nyo, whatever is the result of the TSI, dadagdagan nyo lang ng black precipitate. So, for example, Salmonella and Shigella. Okay? Pareho silang K over A. However, Salmonella, which is H2S positive, magiging K over A yan plus black precipitate. Ang sigela naman, H2S negative, so it's just K over A without the black precipitate. Nakuha guys? So TSI can also check for H2S production. So, ang gusto kong mangyari guys, huwag niyong i-memorize yung TSI individually ng bawat organism. Okay? In fact, I don't want you to memorize the TSI. Ang gusto kong tandaan nyo, yung sugars na fine-ferment nila. 
Kasi kung kabisado nyo na yung sugar, i-memorize yung barin naman talaga yung sugar, at least from that knowledge, you can now interpret, you can now, uh, what do you call this? You can now guess no, yung TSI ng ating organism. Or you can determine, ayun, you can determine now the TSI of the organism just knowing the sugars being fermented. Okay, bawasan natin yung kailangan i-memorize, no? Ayan, bawasan na natin. Tanggal na po yung TSI sa i-memorize. Ang kailangan tandaan, yung mga sugars na na-ferment. Okay?